Here we are, Digestive Physiology PowerPoint number five. I just listened to uh, number four. I realized I had my music a little too loud. Sorry about that. I turned it down. At least I wasn't listening to, you know, Little Wayne or, you know, Ludacris or Cardi B or Missy Elliott, some of the other stuff I normally listen to. I might have had to go back and delete those slides. So we just finished talking about the stomach. We are now going to talk about the accessory structures, all right? Remember, accessory structures are liver, gallbladder, pancreas. No food goes into these. However, they produce secretions that will help digest food. So look at the liver. I already talked about this in the lab PowerPoint, so we've seen a lot of this already. Three-pound organ under right underneath the diaphragm. Four lobes, left, right, quadrate, and caudate. Uh, left lobe, much smaller than the right lobe, right lobe bigger. Falciform lig ligament separates left and right. And then down at the bottom of the falciform ligament is the round ligament. That's a remnant of the umbilical vein. Gallbladder adheres to surface between right and quadrate lobes. So again, the other two lobes besides right and left are caudate and quadrate. And I told you I do the dumb thing in my head the way I remember is that the quadrate lobe is next to the gallbladder. They both have an R in them, caudate doesn't. There you go, nice, uh, good anatomy slide for the liver, shows all the good stuff. Here we are then, looking microscopically at the liver. So notice there are these um, structures, the hepatic lobules, two millimeters by one millimeter. They're little hexagons. Okay, and notice in the corner they have what we call a triad. See how there's a red, a green, and a blue in each color, in each corner. So the red is part of the hepatic artery. That's bringing oxygen and glucose to the cells of the liver so that they don't die. The green is the bile ductule. Remember the liver actually makes bile. It's going to travel down those bile ductules and then join into the left and right hepatic ducts, which will then leave the liver. The blue in each corner is part of the hepatic portal vein. Here we go again, hepatic portal vein. It's bringing in all those nutrients from the intestines because the liver has to make all those plasma proteins. Fibrinogen, angiotensinogen, plasminogen, albumin, the globulins, anti not antibodies, but the other, a lot of the other proteins. So, um... What's going to happen is all those little cells, see all the cells inside of the lobule? Those cells are going to steal the nutrients out of the blood coming in through the hepatic portal vein. They're going to make all those plasma proteins, and then they're going to dump the leftover blood into that central vein in the middle of the lobule. That will drain into the hepatic vein, which goes back into the inferior vena cava. Again, don't mix up hepatic portal vein with hepatic vein. Hepatic portal vein is going in, hepatic vein goes out. So there you go, all the stuff I said. Again, sinusoids here, fenestrated epithelium. We've got big proteins to let in and out of the blood. So we have specially wide capillaries here. Blood filtered by hepatocytes. The liver also, people say it detoxifies. I hate that word, but it does filter stuff out, all right? So... Here a nice close-up of the hepatic triad. Right there in the corner, hepatic portal vein brings in the nutrient-rich blood. Hepatic arteries keep the liver alive. Bile duct is what's going to make, it's going to transport the bile made by the hepatocytes. Functions of the liver. What does the liver do? Oh my gosh, what doesn't the liver do? Take care of your liver, kids. Liver failure is not going to be fun. So, once again, it's the protein factory. It makes all those plasma proteins, okay? Hepatic artery brings oxy blood in to keep the liver alive. Hepatic portal brings all the nutrients that the liver will use to make you know, angiotensinogen, albumin, the globulins, fibrinogen, etc., etc. Metabolizes carbs and fats. So, digestion happens mostly in the small intestine. But then the liver is what's going to put things back together again the way we need them. 
We have a whole PowerPoint on metabolism, we'll see that. But metabolism takes place mostly in the liver. Makes bile, which emulsifies lipids. Now I'm going to make a distinction here that might seem trivial, but it's actually kind of important. Bile doesn't digest fats, it simply emulsifies them. So a triglyceride. Digesting a triglyceride would mean to break the glycerol part from the fatty acids. Bile doesn't do that. Lipases do that. Bile takes big chunks of fat and breaks them down into smaller chunks of fat. That's emulsification. Liver is where you store glycogen. You store roughly 325 grams in your skeletal muscles and 125 grams in your liver. The glycogen in your muscles can only be used by that muscle, whereas the glycogen in the liver can be used by your whole body. Remember, sympathetic nervous system kicks in. Beta-2 receptors cause the breakdown of glycogen back into glucose, raising blood sugar, so you can make more ATP to fight the chubacabra. Uh, remember, so red blood cells, the heme group breaks down, bilirubin, biliverdin, those go to the liver where bilirubin is conjugated. They, it's the term they use. Ultimately, that will turn into urobilinogen, become urobilin, stercobilin, the pigments that color feces and urine. Again, I don't like the word detoxify, but the liver does break down drugs and alcohol. That's why heavy drug users and alcohol users end up destroying their liver. Don't do that, kids. Kupfer cells, these are fixed macrophages, all right? Any bad guys make it into the liver through that hepatic portal vein, for example. Those Kupfer cells, those macrophages, are going to kill them dead. And remember, it takes three organs to make vitamin D. It starts in your skin, then the liver takes over it, then finally the kidney takes over. So you need your liver in order to produce vitamin D. Okay, so what type of cell secretes hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor? Pause the video, form your answer, then move on. Yep, parietal cells. Them's the ones. Nice diagram here of the relationship between pancreas, gallbladder, the bile ducts. Great, great uh, lab slide. Here you go, jump up point, Grand Canyon. If I make it through this, that's where I want to go next. This is about 5.30 in the morning. Look how the rising sun sets the esplanade on fire. The esplanade is that lower layer there. The crack you see is the actual canyon itself. I'm about 6,000 feet above the Colorado River here. Hope I make it back. Okay, kids, see you in digestive PowerPoint number six. Is that what's next? Well, we'll find out.